How's it going, Diablo 2 fans? I'm Switch209, and thank you guys for checking out my video today. Before we even get into discussing the topic, which obviously reading the title of this video, you already know what to expect. I want you guys to understand that there are topic timestamps in the video description. There are gonna be five key points that I'm gonna go over in this video, and each one of them is gonna be labeled, and also with the good and the bad sections, for those specific topics. So please, if you do not have the ability or just not wanna watch the full video, please use the timestamps down in the description so that way you guys can get to the parts that are most critical for you. With that out of the way, I just have to say, I am very, very, very happy and blessed that Blizzard gave me a set of keys to be able to try the early access for the technical alpha. I believe it's from the challenge that they put on their Twitter, which was a warts leg challenge. I'm gonna have a card up above if you guys wanna watch that video because I feel that it is quite entertaining. However, for this video, I wanna cover a lot of the key points that I felt were really important to make sure to take note for the technical alpha because not only were we looking at the graphics to see a lot of the details that were added into the game, but we wanna make sure to test out every single aspect that we can because we only get a four day window. Unfortunately, my window was cut very short because I got into it a little bit late and I'm not gonna be able to play the full way through all the way till Monday morning when it closes. So I've had as much of a window as I could and I felt afterwards to make this video so that way you guys get a good understanding as to what to expect for when the game actually does come out and for a lot of the things that I saw that are gonna be good and that are gonna be bad. And I'm gonna leave it up to you guys. If there's any other questions that you guys have, please leave them down in the comment section below so that way I can get to them as fast as possible because there's so much to cover and with so little time, I don't wanna make this video drag out any longer than it needs to. There are five key topics that I wanna to discuss today and those topics are graphic changes, items, quality of life changes, the skills, and then last but not least, some of the bugs discovered, not only in my gameplay, but from watching a lot of the people that were streaming in early access from Thursday all the way to Saturday. I wanna make sure to cover all the bugs that they found in this video to be able to add on top of the stuff that I was able to find myself. With all of that out of the way, let's get right into the video. Now I think you should have your reward. So the first topic we're gonna to talk about are the graphics changes. We're gonna start off with the good. The first thing that we're gonna discuss is the loading screen characters and how they look. Aside from how they look for Diablo 2, where it is simply just your character, their name, and there's nothing behind them, the loading screen for your character is displayed with the area that you would start in for that act. For example, you have the rogue encampment for act one, and then you have Luke Galane for act two. One of the things that I felt that they did really well when it came to the actual gameplay is the amazing attention to detail when it came to so many aspects. When it comes to a lot of the areas that you would actually play through, they've added a lot of different things to some of the walls. They have added a lot of details to the rock formations outside of Luke Lane. And they also had the lighting of the torches be really distinct to where it only lights up a certain area and the light radius is a lot smaller making it to where this helped to create a lot more of a darker tone within the game. Another place that I felt was done beautifully was the Arcane Sanctuary. It is now actually polished and it looks like it is marble where it reflects the actual character on the ground and just overall was an amazingly beautiful design and a great addition to a lot of the details in the game. Another thing that they did really well were the character, NPC, and monster motions and they made them look a lot more fluid and natural. When it comes to your character starting and stopping their motion, they made it to where it actually looks realistic and it doesn't look very choppy to where you come to an immediate abrupt stop like you would expect from the regular LOD. Also when it comes to attacking, it is a lot more of a fluid motion and it seems more realistic, which I felt was a great upgrade from how it was in regular LOD. The last thing we're gonna cover for the good is how the monsters look. They look so much better with so many improvements and they actually look very menacing in this game compared to regular LOD. The two that are really prominent in this game as far as upgrades are obviously gonna be Endario and Duriel. It just added to a menacing factor that both of them have in the game and it made it to where fighting them was so much more fun. Now we're gonna cover some of the bad aspects. How the characters looked from regular LOD to Diablo 2 Resurrected were almost flipped in a way. For example, the Amazon's face needs a little bit of adjusting. The Barbarian is a lot skinnier and it makes it to where when it comes to him running, his slow speed is not really reflected by how big he really is. And a lot of people were stating that the sorceress is now thick. 
And that's just subjective between everybody as whether you see that as a good or a bad thing. But I just felt that I would include it because talking about the other two characters, I felt that there needs to be something said about the sorceress. And that's the only thing I can think of. The last thing on this list is going to be the Holy Freeze aura. It didn't really do justice to when you actually had a character be frozen or even just chilled. It made them kind of look like legendary Godzilla in a way. And if that's the case, RIP Sanctuary. The next topic we're going to go over are items, and we're going to start with the good. Some of the items were redone, give them much more of a polished, realistic look. For example, the belt, bone helm, breastplate, chainmail, full helm, jewel, and runes. Now for the bad. As there were some items that were done really well, some of them I felt were a little bit basic or changed kind of in a negative manner. Two that I can really point out are Chain gloves they didn't have really much of a gritty Diablo 2-ish feel to them. They almost looked kind of cartoonish to me. And then potions. This is one of the ones I felt is needing of the most improvement because of the fact that the potions all kind of looked like regular rancid gas potions from LOD. And usually when it comes to potions, there is a distinct look to them. They didn't really vary much. And I felt that that's something that they can hopefully improve on for the beta testing. The third topic we're gonna go over is the quality of life. We're gonna start with the good. There is a larger stash compared to what you get for LOD. And there's also a shared stash, so that way if you are wanting to grail or wanting to get specific items swapped between your characters, you are able to do so much like you would for Pluggy. There is also an advanced stats page that has been added to your stats menu to help you with calculating important numbers, such as your breakpoints, magic finds, things of that nature. For any of you guys that come from PD2, you can still transfer items from your stash to your inventory without dragging them from one place to another. And the last thing we're going to cover are the mercenaries. There's now stats to show what auras and skills your mercenaries use. Now we're going to go to the bad. If you come from PD2, you will not be able to gear your mercenary with belts, boots, and gloves. The items that a merc can equip are the same as an LOD, and you also cannot corrupt items in this game. The fourth topic, and one that I feel people are most looking forward to, are the skills. We're going to go over some of the good. Obviously there are so many skills per class, I don't want to cover every single one of them, but I'm going to do honorable mentions for the ones that I felt were the best and the ones that need the most improvement. For the good, we're going to start with the sorceress, and I felt that her fire tree was done very, very well. Inferno looks absolutely amazing and really realistic when it comes to how the fire is depicted compared to regular LOD. Blaze also looks amazing in this game. Another one that's really done well is Ice Blast, and Glacial Spike. For the Barbarian, Double Swing still looks really good, and the way that he actually swings is a little bit more realistic. Battle Orders looks a lot better compared to how you would expect for a regular LOD, and his leap actually looks like he's taking a giant leap from one place to another. It's almost how you would expect when you watch, for example, a Spider-Man movie as he's going from building to building, and it's almost like he's running in the air and getting ready to brace for wherever he lands. And for the Amazon, we have the Cold Arrow, which definitely looks a lot better than you would expect for regular LOD. And then the Fire Arrow looks really well. Unfortunately, this is the character that I did not get to play the most, therefore I do not have a lot more skills to be able to show you guys. However, for what I was actually able to play, these two skills looked really well done. Now for the bad, and the only character that I felt was worth mentioning is a Sorceress. I felt that her skills were really expanded upon the most compared to the Barbarian and the Amazon, and the three skills that I felt needed a little bit more tuning were Blizzard, because I felt that the graphics for how the Blizzard is supposed to look did not really give me a sense of how much damage the skill can actually do and the AoE for which it can actually affect. It is one that just did not really feel like it was a very powerful skill when looking at it. The next one is going to be Meteor. This one, it's improved from LOD, however, I still feel that the actual Meteor itself was a little bit small. It could be a little bit bigger to symbolize just the impact that it would make on the ground when it does actually hit its target. And with a very small meteor and a little bit of a larger AoE, I felt that it didn't do enough justice for the skill. The last thing is going to be the overall lightning tree. I felt that the graphics for regular LOD really gave it justice for the damage that it can actually cause. Whereas in Diablo 2 Resurrected, the actual lightning bolt itself was really thin and it didn't give enough justice for how much damage you can actually do to any monster or any person that would be affected by it. One of those that I felt that beefing up the lightning bolt a little bit would give it a little bit more justice and make you actually feel like you're really doing a lot of damage. The last type we're going to cover are the bugs. We're going to start with the good and there's really only one to talk about. This is coming from BT Neanderthal's stream and he said because he was playing on a console that if you run out of potions in your belt and you click to use one, 
If you have a potion in your inventory, it will actually still work, giving you almost a much larger belt with being able to help with survivability. Now we're going to go over the bad. Everyone's been talking about it, but the load times were obviously an issue when it comes to going from waypoint to waypoint or act to act. And that is something that, again, this is obviously going to be something that needs to be improved, but it is not something that they feel is pertinent because of the fact that they just want to get this out to the people that need to play it and test it. And it is something that will eventually be improved upon. It is not something that they are going to overlook. However, it is one of those things that when it comes to certain bugs in the game, it is not one of the most important to fix at the moment, but it obviously is going to be fixed later. So just keep your heads up and understand, again, this is a technical alpha. It is something to expect, especially with how quickly they want to develop this game. The second thing we're going to talk about is telekinesis. This is a skill that actually ended up crashing a lot of people's games because they were trying to open their stash or to activate a waypoint using telekinesis and the game would just immediately crash. The third thing we're going to talk about is if you were loading from going waypoint to waypoint or going through a town portal and you started making your character accidentally run while the actual screen is still loading, you may end up actually running away from where it is that you're actually trying to go through. For example, when it came to fighting in Dario, I ended up going through a town portal, getting more potions, and when the time was loading up for me to get into her realm, I ended up running away from where the portal was and she started attacking me. By the time the screen loaded, I nearly ended up with no health and she just one-shotted me instantly and I died before I actually got a chance to attack. The last thing we're going to go over is how when it came to buying potions in the actual graphics for Diablo 2 Resurrected, it made it to where a lot of people's characters were no longer moving, but they were able to actually spin their character around and kept them in a lock where they'd have to save and exit the game. It made it to where a lot of people were not able to advance very fast, and unfortunately, it made it to where everyone had to buy everything with the regular LOD graphics. And that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if there's anything else that you feel that I missed and have any questions of your own, please leave them down in the comment section below so that way I can go to answer them as fast as possible. Again, another thing I want to make sure to stress besides just covering it in the bug section, this is a technical alpha. So obviously there are going to be a lot of bugs that they were not able to catch or things that they just obviously could not get to in the time span from which they were creating this game to putting this out for the community to be able to test out. So there are bugs that even going into this, they knew were already in there and they were just waiting for us to be able to find them and to be able to discuss how they are affecting the gameplay. Some of them were very minor to where it was barely even noticeable. Some of them were very drastic. But again, this is a technical alpha. This is supposed to have problems in it because they want us as players to be able to find them. And for things that we might actually see as a problem, they might initially not see it. So again, different perspectives, different players from all different backgrounds were able to play this game and it made it to where it was very, very successful. So again, please just take that into consideration when it comes to judging how some of the things were for this game because it is only gonna get better from here. Other than that, if you like this content and want to see more, please hit the subscribe button and hit the button notification. You know if whenever a new video comes out. And if you like this video, please give it a like and share it so that way we can get this out to as many people as possible to be able to answer a lot of their questions and to give them more insight as to how the technical alpha went for this weekend. Other than that, I hope you guys are all staying safe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.